Greetings everyone, it is amp test time. Today on the bench we have a TDA 7297 15-watt stereo chip amps. So yeah, it has two channels. It's a bridge type configured output. It has a nice heat sink on it. And the board seems to be well laid out. It has a uh, ground plane on the top and a pretty well flooded in ground that you know, it goes in between all the spaces on the bottom. It has a volume control, includes a volume control cap. We have a input, uh, input jack, barrel type, a power supply, and the output terminals for each channel. Nice to see that they included a 2200 microfarad electrolytic capacitor and uh, it looks like a ceramic capacitor across the supply rails near to the chip. Always like to see that. Input capacitors, or I should say the input coupling capacitors, are of the film type. And there is a little LED on there. I never powered this thing up before, so I don't know what color that is. Will it be blue? Will it be red? Could even be green. I don't know. We'll see what it is. I must disclose that I got this for free to review. I got it from Invistia Mall. I bought a few more things from them and they included this for free for me to review. It's a new item they're going to start carrying. And I don't recall the price, exact price right offhand, but it's around $10. Let's take a look at the data sheet for this chip and see what we can expect. Here's the data sheet. Let's see, wide supply voltage range, 6 to 18 volts, minimum components, mute and standby functions. That's disabled on this board. It's always powered up when you plug the uh, power connector in, so that you don't have to worry about that. Uh, typical of any IC, short circuit protection and thermal protection. Um, this looks like a uh, typical application. Output peak current is 2 amps. So this chip seems to be limited to use with 8 ohm loads only. However, at lower voltages you can use 4 ohm loads because you know, you're not going to hit that peak current at lower voltages. But for you know, it's normal operating voltage, which they're saying is 16 and a half volts. Um, you have to use 8 ohm loads minimum. Of course, they're saying the total harmonic distortion is 10% and getting the typical output of 15 watts per channel. So, of course, you know, like we always do, we will measure the output power and see what the clean power is. Here are the distortion curves. At 1 kilohertz it's below 0.1 percent. Of course when it goes up here, when it starts to clip, it's going to go up, but you know, that's excellent. At higher frequencies it is above 0.1 but still well below 1 percent, which is still pretty good. It's always going to be harder for a solid-state amp to produce low distortion at a higher frequency like at 15 or 20 kilohertz but you know to me it's not nearly as important because the uh, the harmonics are well out of range of hearing anyway of course some audio nuts gonna say there could be other implications but uh, I think they're really minor to be honest with you this is the power at different frequency range, 5 watts and 100 milliwatts, still pretty low. All right, it's all hooked up. I'm going to run the music player directly into the input instead of using my preamp. Data sheet says it has a gain of 32, which is borderline for these headphone type output music players. But we'll see how it goes. If I need more gain, I'll just 
use the uh, preamp. In series with the power supply is a diode. So if the voltage is inverted on the power supply, it'll prevent the current from flowing into the amp and making it go bang or letting the magic smoke out. The only problem with having a diode like that is you know they used a silicon diode and it'll have a 0.7 volt drop. Doesn't seem like a lot but it does rob, rob you a little bit of output power at a given supply voltage. So yeah it would, it would have been better to use a uh, shot key diode but uh, uh, we'll just go ahead with the uh, listening test here and take power measurements and see how it does at a given supply voltage. Okay, power supply is hooked up and turned it on. Oh my, they use the brightest blue LED. <laughs> Look at that thing. Are you kidding me? All right, well, whatever. Okay, let's uh, give a quick listen. Well, I can't play that, of course. It's copyrighted music. Embryonic Journey by Jefferson Airplane. Jorma Kokkonen, I guess his name is, the guitarist. A guitarist worthy of uh, quite a bit of respect, I would say. Okay, I'll have to go and do the YouTube safe music. Sounds good to my ears. Like I always say, I can't convey that through the microphone of my camera. This being a stereo amp and my camera's mic being mono and you know the audio is dynamically compressed and all that good stuff in the camera so sounds very good at low volume there is no distortion with uh, the volume turned all the way down no background hiss so it's a very good linear amp one thing with the cheap class D boards always get is quite a bit of hiss with the volume turned down and this of course is a linear type amp oh there's one more thing before I go on to the power test I wanted to show you this Five volts, it's running at five volts. Four volts? Well, our super bright LED got dim, but the amp is still running at four volts. Okay, it cut out. comes on at 3.9 volts but that's pretty wild it runs at such a low voltage well I'll test it and see what the power output is it won't be a lot at such a low voltage but you know it does add some versatility to the amplifier okay we're running at 16 volts 8 ohms both channels driven And let me adjust this. Okay, that's clipping. We'll tune the clipping out. And it looks like we're doing 8.4 volts. Let's turn this off so you can see it. This is our 1 kilohertz fundamental. The 1% distortion pilot signal. And it's pretty clean. You know, maybe tiny little nodes there, but the uh, distortion performance looks really clean so let's see what kind of power we have 8.4 squared divided by 8 we're doing 8.82 watts 
both channels driven 8 ohm loads before clipping. Okay, I'll continue with the measurements and come back with the results. One quick thing before I get to the results here. I'm running it at 9 volts and as I drop the voltage we start getting this third harmonic and let's see here and they're starting eclipse but we get a really large third harmonic when we run it below 9 volts so even though it did run down to 4 volts I really wouldn't recommend going below below 9 volts unless you want that uh, distortion. You may not even notice it in the music because it's a low order harmonic. It may not be really apparent. But I thought I'd just point that out. And here are the power output results. Don't worry about these numbers over here. These are the RMS voltages I measured off the scope that I put into the spreadsheet to have it calculate the output power. So this is the power output at 8 ohm loads at the given supply voltage here. This is the output power at 4 ohms at a given supply voltage. And at the maximum recommended operating voltage of 18 volts, I got 10.28 watts of output per channel. And of course that's clean power. With 4 ohm loads, the maximum I could go before hitting the current limit was 13 volts. Though the heat sink gets really hot running the continuous sine wave. It wouldn't be as bad with music. But I'm going to say I really don't recommend running this amplifier with 4 ohm loads any higher than 11 volts. So, you know, and this amp would work just fine running it with 4 ohm loads in the 9 to 11 volt range. And with 8 ohm loads you can go up to 16 volts. And here is the graph. This is the 4 ohm line and this longer line is the 8 ohm line. And there's a little bit of variance in it. You know, I used the volume control on the amp and getting that fine tuned may not be perfect so some of these might be off a little bit this one this 4 ohm measurement here seemed to be off but I know I was getting a lot more distortion so it was harder to find the perfect point to you know of where to take the measurement normally with a lower impedance you know half the 8 ohm impedance at 4 ohms I would like to see this line diverge more but it's not doing that. I think the amp is a little bit stressed running it at 4 ohm load so it doesn't really diverge as much. Somebody asked me about 8 versus 4 ohm loads, why the lines would diverge and not be parallel. And I tried to answer them but YouTube decided that it's, it wasn't going to work so sorry I couldn't answer that question in the other video. But anyway, it, it's not really a amplifier you should work with 4 ohm loads you just don't get you know the big benefit though it's not going to hurt it to run it in the range that I said up to 11 volts and in summary the sound cut out at 3.9 volts though I found there was some distortion when you run it below 9 volts whether you can hear that or not is debatable Quiescent current at 16 volts was 60 milliamps, and I'm sure some of that was used up by the bright blue LED. Had very low noise and clean at low volume. I kind of look at that now because I had that one amplifier that was giving me problems at low volumes. It was really distorted and quite noisy. So I would give this amp a recommendation. I mean, it, comes all fitted with connectors and everything, a little volume control. The only downside is you can't use it with 4 ohm loads at higher voltages because of the, you know, it's, the chip is just limited in current and of course the heat sink is a little bit on the small side for that. 
Other than that, I say it's a nice little amplifier. And that's it. Thanks for watching.